G'day there, it's Dave here, Dave Mills, with a really exciting video series on the uh, development momentum theory of chess. And uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, I hope that uh, before watching this, you've actually watched uh, and listened uh, to the other videos and you've got a sense of things. Uh, like, you know what momentum is, you know what, uh, you know, development is. Um, under the theory, it's it's uh, essentially the physics of uh, uh, physics way of looking at chess and looking at it as an energetic system and uh, almost like the pieces are two cars uh, colliding with each other. Now, uh, with uh, um, uh, problem number one, uh, we'll get straight into it. I, I want to talk to you about velocity. I want to talk to you about acceleration. I want to talk to you about the different type of forces in chess and uh, it, you, you might ask yourself how does having a different theory of chess help me not blunder my queen or get checkmated or whatnot well uh, you know how we think about the game spills over into uh, what candidate moves we select it spills over into whether we assess we're winning or we're losing how we actually, you know, should we be defending, should we be attacking? And uh, I've uh, written down in my trusty little secret diary uh, uh, my thoughts about this theory, and uh, I'll be sharing them with you uh, uh, in, in this video series. And uh, so we'll just get straight, straight into it. Have you solved the problem that you see before you? <laughs> well, uh, basically, you, you know, chess is a game of pattern recognition. And uh, what I mean by that is that, uh, you know, uh, chess is a game where you do millions and you, you, millions of examples and your brain builds up a, a bank of uh, patterns. Uh, that it can recognize and these patterns and themes repeat over and over and over again So I'm going to talk to you about gravity I'm going to talk to you about and how that plays a role and I'm going to talk to you what velocity is what acceleration is now uh, There's two types of forces. There's contact forces and there's Which is the interaction between you know two or more pieces, okay? and uh, and the, the, those contact forces um, can be between your own pieces or between you and your opponent's pieces, but they're contact forces, okay? And obviously a piece sitting on its own square is contacting nothing, it's loose. And so it do, it's not interacting with anything, um, let alone its, uh, itself. So it's like an asteroid floating out there in the space. And uh, so it's very important to realize the space doesn't protect um, the pieces. It's actually the forces that protect the pieces. So non-contact forces is the interactions between two or more squares. Um, and uh, now uh, uh, there's also points where the gravity shifts and changes um, depending on uh, uh, the position like so. An example of a non-contactive force is the center of the chessboard and the subcenter. This is this is a non-contact force where uh, the space itself affects the how the uh, it's just like uh, the space. <laughs> uh, imagine that this the right at the center of the chessboard is a, is a giant sun, and it's bending the board to its will. Okay, it's it's. All the pieces have a tendency to fall into the center, okay? And because uh, that's where they, they have the most momentum as well, you know? It, 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 it affects the momentum, acceleration, velocity of the pieces. So we'll get into all that. So a non contactive force is an interaction between, uh, you know, uh, uh, like things like the center, the back rank, and so on. Now, uh, you know, the, the, there's a true gravity 
you know, the true, like true gravity is the center of, when you say gravity, it's the center of the board. Now cogs, centers of gravity, uh, you know, obviously uh, um, things that greatly pull the pieces towards them. So the back ranks, the center and the king. All right. You also have, uh, you have minor centers and uh, major centers of gravity. And this has to do with uh, squares, strong square, strong and weak squares, and strong and weak pieces. Okay, and uh, so strong squares are to do with the color and also the structure of the pawns. Uh, pawns change the slowest and so greatly affect the color they're sitting on. Pieces don't really want to trade off for them unless it's a it, there's a winning advantage to it. So you know, color structure. Uh, you know, uh, to do with the weak squares. Weak squares, obviously, the structure isn't supporting those squares. And or, for instance, if you've lost that bishop on that color, you, that color is now weak, uh, weakened by that loss of that bishop. That's why the bishop pair is so powerful because it it maintains a grip on those colors. And uh, so, obviously, strong pieces depend on their position. They depend if they're defended uh, twice. In fact, a piece that's only got one force applying to it, contact applying to it, is semi-loose. Is a better way. It's always semi-strong. It's not. It's not as strong as a piece that has two defending it. So a strong piece has two defending it, or can't be attacked by pawns. And uh, so, uh, obviously, uh, in uh, the value of you know it's the value of the uh, uh, the piece obviously affects how strong it is as well so obviously weak pieces it's the same thing uh, as uh, it's a it's a minor cog but uh, weak pieces are pieces that don't have defense um, loose semi loose they can also it's also their position so for instance a misalignment misalignment and uh, also uh, pieces that are defended by the king are weak, just just naturally. Um, and obviously the value of the piece depends on how whether it's weak or strong. So there's strong and weak forces. Uh, so strong and there's and the the relate this this uh, str the strong force is you know strong pieces in strong squares, and uh, the weak force is weak pieces on weak squares. So uh, you know. Uh, there, there's a relationship between them you, and you can see that you know relationship between them and uh, the so obviously uh, major centers of gravity are the center of the board the back ranks and the king and uh, the back ranks because of pawn promotion and also uh, because in the back ranks you know there's a certain linear momentum here to the game and and that there's a like a um, in the back rank you can do the most damage literally um, to their position because that's the point you want to get the king and sometimes to get the king you need to destroy their position and other times you just go for the king so uh, now so we've spoken about different uh, forces we've spoken about um, uh, you know contact forces and how they can set pieces in motion and uh, uh, or so they can stop a piece or they can change that piece's direction so force obviously can create tension it can affect the value it can affect the direction of the attack it can uh, immobilize forces and uh, so the thing is if you want to accelerate your position acceleration uh, is the concept that I, that I really really want to touch on which is that uh, acceleration is uh, has to do with velocity. An easy way to think of velocity is uh, the tempo. Oh, oh, there we go. The garbage man is uh, here. <laughs> so uh, velocity uh, is the tempo, right? Uh, plus the direction of the uh, the attack. So uh, you know, it's easy. You don't want to waste tempos, and you want to be in the right you know your direction of attack and uh, tempo gaining is like you know has to do with you know 
threats, checks, and captures. So, uh, you know, acceleration, a very easy way of thinking about it is a change of velocity. Okay, and, uh, you know, direction has to do with threats, checks, and captures. Okay, now, uh, the, the development momentum theory, is we can see this position here um, that we're looking at. We know we want to build momentum just at the most basic level. We want to build momentum, but we want to build it towards, obviously, towards uh, centers of gravity because that actually assists it actually, you know, accelerates your momentum, actually helps your momentum, you know. So a change of direction, you know, obviously is a change of velocity. Okay, velocity is to do with tempo or speed, you know, how fast you can move and, you know, and obviously it's plus the direction, plus the threats, checks and captures. So uh, tempo and, you know, and actually direction of attack. So uh, now, uh, the queen, uh, the fascinating thing about the queen is in this position here, is obviously we, we know, we can see, we can build momentum, we want to build momentum with the most powerful pieces, you know, uh, so we can see that the king hasn't got a knight on f6, and that, that is a real weakness, not having the knight on f6, not having a defender guarding those light squares all around the king is, is a significant problem. So the king is a terrible defender. So it's it's important to realize that h7 is semi-loose. The king is a terrible defender. Also, the another thing is that the, we, we can see that the light squared bishop can't contribute really. And uh, we also see that the knight on c4 is, com is a completely weak piece. Weak piece on a weak square. And so we, you know, we've got the center and we've got, uh, we've got the minor center of gravities at, uh, at we've, we've got the, the attack of, on the king, which is a major center of gravity. So we wanna connect our momentum with major centers of gravity, like the center, the king, the back rank. So just just at a basic point of view, queen to d3 just makes sense. Disregarding the the loose knight, I mean it's uh, you want to you know obviously you're going to win the piece, but the main thing is you've connected your momentum to a major center of gravity, which is really significant. You really you're threatening checkmate and the piece. So do you see how the theory sort of You've actually changed the velocity of your position. You've created with threats, checks, and captures. You know, threats, checks, and captures. The direction is very important. Directionality is very important part of acceleration. All acceleration is a change of velocity, and all change is to do. With, it has to do with tempo, and it has to do with direction. The queen is obviously a changed direction in, in as attacking h7 but also attacking the knight at c4. So, you know, uh, one's got to give. And so obviously you need to defend your king with, let's say they try trot out f5 or g6. They trot something out and, uh, you know, probably g6. And uh, you just, you nab the, th the free knight. And then at this point, it's just a matter of technique. It's clearly winning for one at that point. Almost resignable. So, you know, obviously the queen was able to move in one tempo. She was able to threaten both targets in one move. Because um, that, that, that's the whole part of velocity. The less tempo, the faster it takes. And so obviously, you know, acceleration is, is, is an easy way of thinking of acceleration is it's a change of velocity over tempo over the over the time divided by the time so uh you know the the more you can uh understand this theory the more you're going to be looking to connect your momentum towards centers of gravity because it it will actually accelerate your position acceleration isn't just threats checks and captures uh but we'll, we'll get into that into another uh, video there's actually three types of acceleration so next video we'll talk about that and uh, thank you very much
Okay. Bye.